hidden away in the Manx countryside just north of St Jude's is something quite unexpected. An earthwork that's at least 350 years old and dates from the time of the English Civil War. It's the Kerrogarrow Fort. This is an extraordinary construction, one of the most amazing forts on the island. It's actually a massive earthwork built in the shape of a great rectangle with pointy bits at its corners. These corner bits actually provided greater protection because running around the top of the earthen bank would have been a wooden stockade. And if someone attacked the side of the fort down there, you could effectively fire on them from here, hitting them in the back. The sign here says that this fort was probably incomplete, and there is reason to suggest this because in the 19th century someone found a plan of this fort in the British Museum and it showed it as being very much larger. The fully extended fort might have been like this, but what's actually here today at Kerogaro is this. Looking at it from the air, you can see how beautifully symmetrical it is. This is a common plan for forts of this period, and no doubt the Earl of Derby, Lord of Man, had his best military people come over from England to design it and lay it out. It's still a massive construction, though. The land on the adjacent fields is the same height as the ground on the fort, but there's a ditch running round it all. Presumably, the earth for the ramparts was taken from there, and there is a local legend that the women of the parish were pressed into service to carry baskets of earth to help in its construction. It's a mystery to me why the Earl of Derby built this fort here in the first place. It's not on a river, it's not even on a road. The only way to get here in the 1650s was by marching across the fields, rather like today. It's not on the coast, defending a port, and it's miles from the great powerhouses of Peel Castle and Castle Russian. So why is it here? The latest thinking is that when it was built, the area between the fort and the hills in the distance was boggy, undrained, and certainly impassable by an army. To get from Ramsey to Peel, you first of all had to march northwards, skirting the edge of the waterlogged land, and that would have brought you right past this fort. So it was defending an important route across the north of the island. When the Earl of Derby left the island to fight for the royalist cause and was captured and executed, the man he'd left in charge on the island, Iliam Doan, decided it would be better to surrender the island to the parliamentary navy rather than try to fend off the inevitable attack. Meanwhile, the Earl's wife, the Countess Charlotte, was also seeking to surrender the island, only she was offering to sell the Manx people to Cromwell for tuppence or threepence a head. Ilium Doan gathered men together and took over the various forts on the island in anticipation of the parliamentarians arriving. He would be able to tell them that there would be little resistance on the island. However, not all the forts were willing to surrender without question. When Ilium Doan's men arrived here on the 21st of October 1651 to take this fort over, it was garrisoned and there were some heated exchanges at the gates down there. The commander of the fort, Major Thomas Stanley, inside the gate refused to cooperate. Outside, William Tyr and Ewan Christian started shouting at him about the iniquities of Lady Derby and her plan to sell off the Manx for tuppence a head. Ewan Kirgi, outraged that anyone should refuse to take part in this high patriotic endeavour, sent his men off to set fire to the nearby house of John McSale, one of the soldiers inside the fort. When the flames were seen rising, the men in here started deserting and very quickly the fort was taken and so everything was now ready for the island to surrender. 
So the fort had played a small and, frankly, not very noble part in the island's history. And whatever structures were here during those turbulent years, the stockade or buildings in the central area, have long gone. All that's here today are the weathered remains of a once great endeavor.